following is a presentation of the Belly Up Sports Media Network. Hello, everyone, and welcome into another episode of Rising to the Occasion. We're very excited to get into talking about this past championship Sunday and everything that went on there. We had the Chiefs against the Ravens and then the Niners against Lions. Very fun matchups, uh, and they lived up to the hype. Absolutely lived up to the hype and a lot of fun. I think a lot of people around the nation are probably upset with who's going to the Super Bowl. We've got the Chiefs and the Niners going to the Super Bowl. Not many people are very happy. The conspiracy may not have been true, but now people are trying to twist it on why the conspiracy was true. Um, But before we dive into today's episode, I want to take a moment and talk about something very special, and that's our friends over at SeatGeek, because if you're a fan of live events, whether it be sports like we are, or maybe you just like music or theater or comedy, whatever the case may be, you know how challenging it can be to find the right tickets at the right price. That's where SeatGeek comes into play, because they make it very seamless with a mobile experience. SeatGeek allows you to buy and sell tickets in just a couple of taps. It doesn't get any simpler than using SeatGeek. But it gets even better because SeatGeek also grades every ticket purchase and every ticket based on its value to help you immediately find and identify the best seats that fit your budget. So you, you go on there and you see a red dot, you know you can keep on searching. If you see a yellow dot, you can probably find a better deal than that. The green dot lets you know that you found, found a very good deal based on what the ticket is, where it's located, and it also helps you find t- certain tickets and seats in your budget. So SeatGeek is amazing with that color coding system. Plus, they make it very easy and very uh, very nice for you because every purchase is fully guaranteed so you can shop securely with a complete peace of mind. We love SeatGeek so much that we teamed up with them, them to get you guys an amazing offer, and you can use our code R2TO at checkout, and boom, you'll get $20 off at checkout. So go to SeatGeek.com or download the SeatGeek app and use that code R2TO and use the best way to find tickets uh, to any kind of event, whether it be sports or music, comedy, all of that kind of stuff, theater even. Uh, so go on there and check it out. It's SeatGeek.com or download the SeatGeek app and use that code R, the number two, T-O. Use that at checkout and get yourself an amazing deal. Uh, go check them out, SeatGeek. But let's go ahead and get into the episode. First, got to bring in my co-hosts. I've got the man sitting next to me here in studio. I've got Jeremy. How we doing? Doing pretty good. Uh, it's been a long, eventful day, but just... We're trying to re recreate everything, obviously, that's happened for the going to the Super Bowl between the – well, obviously, seeing now for the Chiefs and the 49ers going down. It's – like you said, it was really good to see those games go down, and it was definitely – it was definitely fun for some games, and it was definitely heartbreaking for some teams, to say the least. But, I mean, looking at the Super Bowl, obviously, as we as Josh has mentioned, obviously having the Chiefs and the 49ers, I think this is going to be a really good Super Bowl, obviously. It's – Cool to see Mr. Mr. Irrelevant Brock Purdy make it to his second Super Bowl. And obviously, Patrick Mahomes is no stranger to seeing the Super Bowl. But, I mean, it's definitely going to be a fun one, I think. But looking at to it, obviously, I know we got some other little snippets that we're going to be talking about tonight. But, Josh, I'm going to get the chit-chat, and let's get rolling with it. Yeah, we're, we're going to get to those two games that went on this past weekend. But we've also got Blake Lane, man from Mobile, Alabama himself. Oh, Blake, is the conspiracy me. still true? Uh, is there another twist to the conspiracy that you believe in, or what? <laughs> no, nah, man. Uh, look, Chiefs, congrats to them. Patty Mahomes, killing it. Uh, a lot of people doubting them. A lot of people saying that, uh, you know, they couldn't get it done and it was Lamar Jackson's to take. And old Spags and old Coach Andy Reid, they they drew something up and uh, they were just frustrating the Ravens' offense, man. Mm-hmm. So congrats to them boys. And then Brock Purdy, you know, uh, Cameron Newton saying that he was a game manager and he makes the big plays in the second half and the Niners' defense stands up. Boys, I think we're in for a hell of a Super Bowl. Uh, I think I this totally is going agree. to be. I'm ready for it. I I think this is going to be one heck of a matchup. I'm excited. You got Brock Purdy, uh, you just playing playing really really good solid football right now, man. And then you got the soon to be goat on the other side. Two pretty dang good defenses. Uh, I'm excited, man. It was two hellacious games. And, uh, and that's what it's supposed to be when you get to this time of the year. So I'm ready to talk about them, fellas. 
Yeah, I feel like the committee made the right decision for this NFL playoffs. Definitely. Like, yeah, I mean, the committee totally chose the right teams. But uh, <laughs> so I, I wanted to go back because you, you reminded me of this, uh, and, and I saw this earlier, I think today or yesterday. So Detroit Illustrated posted this before the matchup, of course, and they were talking smack about the Niners and blah, blah, blah. Uh, and they posted Goff, greater than Purdy. Uh, Panay, uh, better than Trent Williams. Amon Ross St. Brown, better than Ayuk or Debo. Gibbs better than CMC, Hutch better than Bosa. Get your star power power up. These ain't even hot takes. Uh, I'm looking through all these. I think these are extremely extremely hot takes. Uh, Panay over Trent Williams. So Goff over Purdy. We can have that discussion. It's only Purdy's second year. Therefore, mm-hmm. I won't take the discussion. Yeah. But then we're talking Trent Williams. You're going to say Panay better than Trent Williams. Trent Williams is the best, possibly the best. Offensive tackle ever to play the game. That's like gut punch. <laughs> offensive lineman ever to play the game. And then you're going to say Amon Ra better than Ayuk or Debo. That's another one up, for, good, up for discussion. <laughs> up for discussion. Gibbs better than CMC. Okay, now you're just out your, Slow your, your, roll, out your mind. And then this Hutch better than top. Bosa. I just, no, I, I, who typed this Hutch, up? Third grade? Hutch is up there with Bosa. They're comparable. So another, another, com- but, but the Trent Williams and the CMC. I'm not going to take that no, kind of slander. No way. <clears throat> no way. Do, who who did that? Uh, it was Detroit uh, Detroit Illustrated, uh, I think is what it was. Yeah, Detroit oh, Illustrated. Okay, yeah. yeah, yeah, they're going to be super homer, but delete your Illustrated. Uh, delete your account. Delete your website. <laughs> do whatever. Uh, go in the tank like Sports Illustrated. Uh, th- that would be a great lead to follow. So um, trash takes the, the – <laughs> I mean, CMC is the best player in the league right now. Absolutely. So my, so my my brother is a is a Lions fan and a Nebraska fan. So Ooh. I was teasing him at <laughs> halftime. I don't know. I feel like I smell a comeback, and he said, "I'm not I'm not holding my breath because I kind of feel like it's coming." I'm a Nebraska fan. I'm used to it, you know. So <laughs> yeah, that's that was definitely the feeling that was going on in the house last night. But yeah. let's start off with the first game that happened last night, uh, I guess two nights ago for you you, you guys who are watching or listening because uh, we pre-record these. But we had the Kansas City Chiefs, Baltimore Ravens. Uh, I am going to post uh, post the clips of me coming out, and I, I doubled down on two different shows because I did Billy Up After Dark. I doubled down. I picked the Chiefs. I, I just I don't – I'm not going to bet against the Chiefs. And not only that, but a lot of people were pushing it to the side. And I, I know you, you don't have to – you don't have to take the atmosphere and everything. You don't always have to take the the team's reactions and stuff too seriously. But I, I brought up the fact that, you know, you saw John Harbaugh dancing in the locker room. We're going to the AFC Championship game. Yeah, let's all party. And then you saw Andy Reid tell his his guys, we're not done yet. We got another one. And then whenever that one was done, we're not done yet. We got another one. There is a difference in mentality there. And I thought that spoke a lot to it. The Chiefs just came out starting off hot. Uh, I hit my parlay basically in the first half. I still had like four yards left from uh, who was it on there? I had, uh, oh, it was uh, uh, Isaiah Pacheco. I had like four more yards for him in the second half. Hit that one easy. So thanks a lot, guys. You got, you all connected so easily for me. So thanks to that. Um, but no, it, it, it looked like it was going to be a shootout for a minute. Uh, Lamar catching his own pass for 13, 13 yards. Crazy, crazy game. And I you could tell Lamar was just trying everything he could, but it felt like he was trying too hard. It looked like he wasn't settled down into the moment. Uh, and, and ultimately, the Chiefs just owned the game. Second half, defensive game. That's what I expected was a defensive game, but that was a an incredibly defensive game. Only three points scored from the Baltimore uh, it was, was the only scores in the second half. Uh, amazing Amazing game. I thought it was really fun, especially the fact that it kind of came down to the wire. Um, Blake, h- how'd you feel about this this AFC Championship game? Who oh, the Ravens? Uh, man, the Ravens just didn't make the adjustments. Uh, the Chiefs and Spags uh, designed up some blitzes. They were they had a game plan to put pressure on Lamar Jackson. And I just felt like the Ravens never decided to figure it out. They just never went to the drawing board and said, hey, look, this is what they're doing. This is what we're going to do to counter it. Nothing. And Lamar stayed under pressure the entire game. The Ravens continued to shoot themselves in the foot. Lamar with the terrible throw in the end zone to likely into triple coverage. Uh, 
the real heartbreaker to me was Zay Flowers with the taunting down at. Yeah, at, I that think was he dumb. was inside well, the and, ten. And he at like totally the took his, and they took them out of contention for the the end zone basically. Yep. And then ends up fumbling it later, and, right on the one. Yeah, and that's that was the big one for me is when he fumbled, uh, and that was just kind of like where all the all the momentum just just completely left the stadium. You get to the big game, Lamar Jackson, and you're the MVP of the league from a lot of folks. You are the guy that is supposed to uh, get the monkey off the back for the dual threat quarterback. You're you're supposed to be. This is the year where they they look at that quarterback and they say, "Hey, Lamar's gonna do it for us, man. Like this is it." And he he choked, and um, that they just they didn't get it done, man. And you gotta feel, you gotta baby, hold on. <laughs> uh, you you gotta feel for the Ravens, and uh, you, you gotta feel for Harbaugh, man, because they were super close, and and you really felt like they had, this was the year to beat the Chiefs, and they couldn't get it done because everybody kept saying that. Pat uh, Patrick Mahomes didn't have the receivers this year, and um, it was just him and Kelsey. And then Katarius Tony was a big distraction throughout the season, and uh, he come out the morning of on IG Live and tried to make a big distraction and all of this stuff. Man, everybody was just saying this was the year to beat the Chiefs, and you still couldn't get it done. So I think this is a huge letdown for Harbaugh. I think this is a huge letdown for. Um, for Lamar Jackson, and I think it was a huge letdown for the entire Baltimore offense because I felt like, for the most part, Baltimore's defense did their job. Mm-hmm. So yeah, they, they absolutely uh, did. I mean, you you held. I, I know I know that the Chiefs haven't been great on offense, but you know they've they've been a, 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 they've, they're still star studded. They're still they're still stacked on offense. And so looking at the at the uh, Kansas City offense, I still feel like. Uh, seeing that, it's just uh, you, you shut them down to 17 points. You shut them out in the second half. You did your job on defense. And we expected the Baltimore defense to be aggressive, come out there and and shut them down as much as they can. Uh, and overall, I don't know, I just looking at the, at the, the uh, offense for, for the Ravens, uh, you know, it's at one point we were, we were joking because Lamar was the, was the second highest uh, yardage for receivers on his team. Um, but you know he had that little 13 yard bat back to himself and 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 take off running but you know somebody as as athletic as him I just felt like he never settled down into the game he never played his game and there were so many times where he's trying to slide in the pocket and look downfield like that that triple coverage that they threw down there to likely shifting through the through through the pocket and staying back there when you've only got one man to beat if you take off and run just do what you do best and use your legs. And it just seemed like he was trying to play to that that mentality of no, I can I can pass. And that's what he's been trying to do all season long, and he's been doing it really well all season long. But you don't do that in the biggest, most crucial point of of, of the biggest game. Uh, and and he did that a lot. But Jeremy, how about you? I know I know you probably felt a little a little relieved knowing that your your rival team, the Baltimore Ravens, went down. Yeah, it was definitely. A smiling moment to see the Baltimore Ravens go down just because, like like Josh knows and obviously Blake knows, I'm a Cincinnati Bengals fan, so it's definitely, like I told Josh the last episode, I wish both Baltimore and Kansas City would just lose. But I know I don't get that luxury in this type of situation here. But, I mean, looking at um, what Baltimore was able to do, like I'll still give Baltimore a little bit of credit for what they did to hang against Kansas City. But at the end of the day, they just, they just couldn't – get their momentum back and rolling just because, like, obviously what you both have mentioned for the triple coverage for up to Flowers, and it didn't go nowhere, obviously, as planned for anybody. But, I mean, looking at what Kansas City has done all year in clutch moments or just even whether it's in the regular season and you're just starting off the game, they'll come out and they'll come out with a big bang. And Kansas City's defense – unbelievable in that sense just for what they were able to do against Lamar Jackson just give him pressure then obviously like I've like I've obviously mentioned on numerous episodes if there's one guy you need to do is stop Chris Jones and 
not even just Chris Jones alone, just the entire Kansas City defense, just because you look at their defense, whether you're looking on the front four or anybody in the backfield, they're always going to be on point. And that in that situation for Baltimore, they were trying little things to try and peg pocket Kansas City's defense, but they just simply couldn't get it to work. But looking on, like I said, for Baltimore side now, it was – I'll give them credit. I'll, I will, but, I mean – you, you just can't rely on Lamar Jackson to be the entire Baltimore Ravens offense at this at this stage. It, it's one thing to do it against, like, a not-so-positive team in the league, like in the middle of the regular season, but this is coming down to the clutch moments to where you're. this is the game, and you obviously know you're. if you win this game, you're going to be going to a Super Bowl. You can't afford to make little itty-bitty things and try and make it a million dollar thing and looking at that perspective obviously he did that way too many times in my perspective and it definitely came back and bit him but I mean the other thing that I, I felt like was was so wrong with that Baltimore offense was just the fact that it really felt like it, it went through two guys it went through Lamar and it went through Zay, Zay Flowers yeah and without those two guys on the field because Zay Flowers had an amazing game five catches 115 yards yeah definitely but you know he also had that crucial fumble uh, he had that, you know, the, the, like the, the, just before the fumble, the taunting, which backs it's him up 15 so yards. Dumb. You're right there, almost in in the red zone, if I remember you correctly. You did yourself, you know. And 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 you 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 stood up and and you taunted over the player. It was obvious. It was mm-hmm. a stupid stupid decision to have ever done it. Yeah. They back you up where you're closer to midfield now. So now you have a big play and you get back down there. But I mean, that's just the thing. You know, that 15 yards backs I you hope up you so got much. I full of that. And yeah, I mean, that was a, that was a terrible mistake. But it felt like it really went through them. Uh, Mark Andrews being in the game really didn't decide much. No. I thought he would have been a bigger impact. Me too. He was only targeted twice, and he he, he had 15 yards, so seven and a half yards per carry Debo or per, per reception. Yeah, I mean, that's that's if you kept on using them, but. It just you know, it was it was weird to see that he, he Lamar wasn't using him or Isaiah Likely very much at all because mm-hmm. I think Isaiah Likely also only had two catches right around the same as Mark Andrews. Yeah. Definitely. So it was just it just seemed like this Baltimore offense was really what lost the game for him, and they never found any sort of rhythm. Uh, yeah. It felt like there was one drive where they found rhythm, got down there and scored. Outside of that, there was really nothing. Stumped. But uh, what did what did you guys what did you guys make of the the little controversy the little Bickering back and forth there before the game, whenever uh, uh, Justin Tucker was, was and- yeah, Justin Tucker was lining up to practice and warm up and everything, because you you see Patrick Mahomes toss it, you know, uh, tosses kicking gear over off to the side, uh, and then you know even Travis Kelsey come and do the same thing. I thought that was poor sportsman like, but at the same time, I was really curious why he was down on that end of the field. Uh, it, I I just I just didn't understand the situation. I think it's all fair and game, man. I I just think it's a, a big time matchup and uh, a playoff matchup, and uh, there's a lot of trash talk that goes on. Mm-hmm. You know, look, they went after the kicker, but you know, <laughs> hey, get your stuff up out of the way, brother. Pat yeah. Mahomes, the the future goats, trying to warm up. I think Kelsey was trying to send a message. A lot of people were saying that the Chiefs were about to get blasted. And, uh, you know, I think they went in there with the chip on their shoulders and they were saying, hey, we're not going to back down from anybody. We're not about to let you just sit here and, uh, you know, practice your your PATs and uh, stretch right here in front of us while we're trying to warm up. So get all your stuff and get it out of here. You're in my way. I'm in your way. Who's going to be the bigger man and and push the other one out? That's kind of what it was. I just felt like it was kind of a uh, who's you know what is bigger right now. So, you know, it's just, you know, them, them stepping out there and doing their thing. Uh, yeah, I, I thought it was. I thought it was kind of funny, and you know, it's it's one of those things. A lot of people are making a big deal about it, but I, I'm all, I'm all for it as long as you don't lead any further into actually, you know, throwing hands or anything yeah. like that. Sit sit there and banter back and forth. Sit there and have a little bit of fun, yeah. fun with it. But you you keep on throwing out the future goat, Blake. And so I want I want to throw this out for you guys because I had this this discussion with several people now, and really nobody wants to hear it out. So. Who would you rather have as your quarterback? If you were to start a franchise today, would you rather Patrick Mahomes or Tom Brady? If, if you if you were to take based on skill and 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 by who you know is going to be able to, to to do more, who who do you, who do you pick? Who's who's the more talented quarterback? The more talented. That's that's what I'm saying. Who's the more talented quarterback? 
I think is Patrick Mahomes. I, I would say so. I, I don't know how you can argue yeah. that Tom Brady is more talented. Uh, arm strength, yeah. very similar at the very least, if not goes to Patrick Mahomes. Yeah. El- elusive, uh, you know, uh, being more elusive, yeah. Patrick Mahomes. Yeah, being more mobile, Patrick, Patrick Mahomes. Mahomes. The vision downfield, Patrick Mahomes. Being, his- being able to throw in any position, mm-hmm. whether it be on the run, standing in the pocket, uh, behind his back, uh, upside down, lines, upside and- down, spinning around on his head doing and, a and doing a backflip off the top of the stadium, Patrick Mahomes. No gainer. <laughs> you know, so yeah, I just, I, so, so the more talented quarterback, I think is very obviously Patrick Mahomes. Mm-hmm. And I don't think there's really much of a, of a discussion for that. Yeah. What's, what's making Tom Brady so much better. It's the, it's the wins Wing. and it's the Super Bowls too. Yeah. That's, that's something incredible that he's done. And I'm not going to take that away from him, mm-hmm. but Let's fast forward a few years. Let's say I'm, I'm I'm projecting as if Patrick Mahomes wins this year. Let's say in two years he wins another one. Uh, he doesn't make it back next year, but the year after he goes up, wins another one. I don't think that's out of that's out of the left field. I don't think that's a far stretch. Nothing. I think that's pretty reasonable for him to win this year and then go on in a couple of years to win another one. Let's say he were to do that. He's now got four four rings. Just catching up. Is he not now pushing the title? towards goat because he is the more talented he's he's putting together winning seasons consistently mm-hmm. winning the AFC more times than not and then winning the Super Bowl now four times compared to Brady's six right six or is it six or seven or did, or did he think, win seven? I thought, I thought Brady had seven you might be right yeah I think I think, I think he did have seven because he won yeah. he won one down in Tampa or did he win two in Tampa one just one in Tampa. Okay, so yeah, so I'm I'm forgetting the the Tampa one. So he's got he's got seven. Yeah. So it, regardless, you're over halfway at four. I, I I'm just I'm looking at this goat discussion. I think a lot of people don't want to talk about this goat discussion with the quarterbacks, but there's a lot of 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 arguments to be made that Patrick Mahomes is pushing that envelope. I don't mm-hmm. think he's there yet, obviously, because I think wins and how long of a career Tom Brady had. But yeah. that's just my point. I think a lot of people want to shy away from that discussion. I think it's a discussion that needs to be had each and every year that Patrick Mahomes does what he's doing. Mm-hmm. Because this was the worst their offense looked all season long. And they made the they made the playoffs. They they won eleven games in the regular season. They went eleven and six. They won the AFC. They're going to the Super Bowl. They they are probably I haven't looked at the at the the odds, I can pull that up real quick. But I mean, they're they're probably going to be the the favorites in the Super Bowl. They I would have imagine to be the favorites, honestly. Uh, at least at least by a lot of people, yeah. uh, you would think that man they they might they might be the 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 favorites. Uh, let me let me try to pull up these odds real quick. You would think at least. Yeah. So I mean, it's it's just crazy. I think I because th- you 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 kept on bringing that that up with the the goat, and so I kind of wanted to, to kind of. Throw that out there because I know we had that that discussion a little bit too. So in my, in my mindset, I mean, you would think with just even looking at obviously, I know Patrick Mahomes hasn't been in the league nowhere near as long as Brady, but I mean, you got to think for like career stats, he's definitely got to be pushing a lot of records for him. Uh, yeah, I mean, when you talk about overall wins, uh, so right now San Fran is a one and a half point favorite. Really? That's that's likely to change though. It's oh, yeah, oh, that's easily. that's the day after yeah, they chose. We have a lot of time uh, so the Super Bowl. There's a lot of things that can change. You've got uh, injury reports that can change. Exactly. You've got, uh, of course, weather won't really affect this yeah. game too much. Where's it at again? Vegas? It's in Vegas. Yeah, it's at, at Allegiant Stadium. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I, mean, I just, I mean, I'm, I'm looking at Patrick Mahomes. I think he has to be in the discussion. He has to be. For greatest of all, all time. Yeah. Um, but let's go ahead and go and jump over to the other game. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've got the NFC Championship game. We had the Niners, or yeah, the Niners-Lions. Uh, and we had a very fun one when it came down to the the, the Lions Niners. Uh, I was sitting there, and I even made it clear I was going to cheer for the Lions, but there was just too much inside of me that I could not pick the Lions to win this game. I just didn't think they had it in them. Yeah. When you look at the two rosters and overall talent, I think the Lions have a lot of young talent, a lot of sneaky good talent, but do I think they match up against the Niners? I just don't see it. So I, I picked the Niners because just out of me being real with it, I was cheering on the Lions. I would love to see them make it. Mm-hmm. They just didn't have what it takes. They start off the first half amazing. First drive was a touchdown, Couldn't, wasn't it? Yeah, first drive was a very quick touchdown. Yeah. Less than less than five Three minutes. Plays. Getting getting down there very quick uh, and 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 scoring and you know it's just 
electric plays, a lot of big time plays for the Niners. Uh, so you, you or for the Lions, sorry. So the first half, you see uh, them come out twenty four to seven, seventeen point lead. Uh, I, I like I told you guys, I was teasing teasing my brother. Ah, it kind of feels like kind of feels like they might come back, and sure enough, they come back uh, and they go seventeen unanswered in the third quarter. Uh, and then they end up winning the fourth quarter to the Niners too. And so the Niners just come out. Brock Purdy using his legs Man. as much as he did. You seeing Mr. Irrelevant using his legs, something that we're not used to seeing from him. That was something that kind of caught me off guard a little bit. I know it's there. We know he's more athletic than what he shows. But uh, you know, so you know, just seeing seeing him use his legs as much as he did. Uh, he had close to 50 yards rushing. Easily. Uh, so, you know, seeing him over there, that was that was a lot of fun to see him using his legs. Uh, and then, of course, Christian McCaffrey just being the greatest to, to step on the field, at least in, in recent recent time. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't, I'm not going to say he's the greatest of all time because I still think Barry Sanders holds that. Um, but, yeah, I mean, just seeing CMC, using him, at, you know, to, the, way that, the way that you're supposed to, um, but then Brock, Brock Purdy coming out there, Mr. Irrelevant, doing what he needs to do. Uh, on, on the Lions side of the ball, I mean, between uh, David Montgomery and Jameer Gibbs, an amazing duo over there. Uh, and, and the fact that both of them scored in the first half, uh, that, that was impressive. Jared Goff, I felt like, was slinging the rock in the first half. I don't, I don't really know what happened. I think the, I think the Niners, I, I guess I do know what happened, but I don't know what happened to the Lions offense uh, because it just seemed like they shut off all, all you know they they, they they shut off at halftime mm-hmm. they didn't come back out at halftime they weren't fired up anymore I think they got too comfortable with that lead um but I, I I do know what happened for the for the Niners they adjusted on defense they found what was what was attack you know wh- wh- where the attack was coming from and that was mainly the rush uh they they had more rushing yards in, in the first half than any other team has been able to do in a half in Kyle Shanahan's coaching career at the 49ers. Facts. So that is that is impressive from the Lions being able to, to run the ball so much, but they they went away from the run quite a bit uh, and you saw a lot of that and so I, I just seeing what the Niners were able to do, go into a lot more zone coverage. Uh, they they were able to take away from the man coverage so much, go over to zone uh, and kind of run that a little more, and that seemed to really shut down the Lions overall. Yeah. Uh, obviously, it completely shut them down until really late in the fourth quarter. Yeah. They scored when it was too late. I felt like that was poor, poor game management. You mm-hmm. didn't, you didn't. I don't know why they ran on 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 what was that first and goal, yeah, second, second and goal. goal, I think. Uh, and so, so I don't know why they ran there. I would have tried to throw the ball because you're going for stop the clock. Absolutely. If you get tackled in the backfield, which is a very high possibility, high possibility. with what you're doing right now then the clock is still running. So I thought that was really poor. Uh, and then, of course, the crazy catch by oh, Brandon Ayuk right off the defender's face. Yeah. Good defense. You just couldn't pull the ball in. And then Ayuk stays up and, and finds the ball, locates the ball, catches it. And barely I, touches personally, I feel it. like, man, that's a touchdown because he just got possession as he's being touched. Whatever. He ends up getting a touchdown yeah. later on anyways. So Brandon Ayuk had, had an amazing game, especially with knowing that uh, you know, Samuel, uh, you know, uh, Debo Samuel might not be playing too much. He might not be playing at full speed. Yeah. Uh, and so Brandon Ayuk stepping in, uh, he, he didn't really take a lot of targets, but he had a lot of yards uh, to be able to catch that touchdown too. That was, that was a huge play, a huge turning point in the game. Um, but Blake Niners end up winning the game with a big time second half. Uh, I mean, did, did you see the comeback coming? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I knew the I knew the Niners weren't gonna go down like that and get blown out. Uh, the The biggest thing for me was the lines, man, and the mistakes that they made. Uh, their receivers consistently dropping balls on on third down, and uh, you know they they go for it twice in the second half uh, in San Francisco territory. They left six points on the field, and I know uh, Dan Campbell said that uh, being aggressive is what got them there. But I feel like at the end of the day, in that situation, you got to take three points when they're available, and you're up 14 uh, on the first go. If you take the three points, you go up 17, and it's a three-possession game again. I don't, I don't know how you look at that in the mirror and say, "Hey, let's go for it. Give me the, give me the three. Let me make it a three-possession game." And then the second one, man. That one is even more head scratching because from 48 yards out, that field goal attempt. Let's be honest, in the NFL, 
that's that should be butter biscuits. All right, forty eight yards in the NFL, you got to knock that through. You get paid millions to knock those down. So I didn't understand the second one either. I I get it. If he would have got both of them, we would have been sitting here talking about how he's the greatest coach of all time, right? But <laughs> for some reason, dudes with the name of Dan just always love to go for it on fourth down in big time <laughs> games Lanning, and big Dan time Campbell. situations. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, I, I knew CMC would get going and, and, and the Niners would get going. I just felt like the Niners needed a spark, man. They needed a little, a turnover or something like that. <laughs> uh Oh, Levi. <laughs> um, and they finally, they finally got that. So sounds like, sounds like uh, he's, he's mocking the lions. Yeah. Sounds like yeah, a mocker. he's, he's, he, he's yeah. choking a little over there. <laughs> yeah. He, he's been upset here. He just woke up. So he's trying to, he's trying to catch himself. No, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm right there with you. I feel like overall, and I feel like you, you brought one, one thing about the lions, the receivers dropping passes. Reynolds dropped Horrible. several. I think he dropped three passes that I, I, I can remember. Uh, you know, so he, he could have had a big day. He dropped several passes. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I feel like even Amon Ross St. Brown had a couple that hit him right in the hands, should have pulled him in. Uh, the the defense, too, just doing what they've been doing all season long, not wrapping up, uh, you know, not being able to, to make the tackle. But, uh, Jeremy, I mean, Niners ultimately just the, the more physical team in the second half and end up pulling it out. Absolutely. I mean, the Niners just coming out of the second half, it was really the flip of a switch and how, how much of a game changer that it can truly do just to go into halftime and, re- and adjust yourself and understand – from everybody's perspective on what we can adjust to and make small little adjustments. And as you guys obviously seen the game and how it went, it definitely worked. But, I mean, talking about the um, talking about the Detroit Lions, what, what you said, you don't know what happened for the, during the second half. I can answer your question. They got shot with a tranquilizer dart, and they just went to sleep. <laughs> That's for dang sure. I mean, looking at that type of aspect for the Detroit Lions – I, I was sincerely rooting for the Detroit Lions in that situation just because of what Dan Campbell has gone through the last three years in the season. The two years ago, he won, I think, maybe four games. Then he succeeded a little bit more going into um, the, the following year. I think he won maybe like six or seven games. And then obviously, looking at this year was his best, his best season, if I had to guess, obviously out of his career. But, I mean, looking at the San Francisco 49ers, looking at Mr. Relevant Brock Purdy, the farmer out of Iowa, I mean, looking at him, he he was just doing unbelievable things for the San Francisco 49ers throughout the entire game. And the thing that definitely got me going was just you'd see him rolling out of the pocket just a little bit and just give him those little floaters right to where they say, if you're scrambling, you should never throw it to the yeah, middle the, of the, the field. The one, the one that was a big third down play, well, I think. The one just looking kinda, like an Odell catch. Almost almost getting getting hit, flips it up, and, yeah. and a crazy catch, too. Who, who was it that caught that was one? Was it Debo? Uh, I don't think. It might have been Ayuk. Ayuk. Yeah, I think it was Ayuk. But, I mean, looking at San Francisco. Or, if, or was it was it maybe Juwan Jennings? I'm, I'm trying to think of who it was. I think now, it was either Ayuk or Jennings. I think it might be Jennings. But, I mean, looking at him, the San Francisco 49ers. You looked like you knew who it was there, Blake. Was it Ayuk or Jennings? I, I, if I'm remembering correctly, I think it was Jennings. Yeah, I, I feel like I it was. So. Just incredible, too, the way that he, he was able to catch that ball. I mean, dumb move by, by Brock oh, yeah, Purdy. Absolutely. Really dumb move. Don't throw it there. Just, you know, it's, it like, is what, what it is. What are you doing? <laughs> and, and honestly, the first half, I felt like the Niners – it was, it, you know, it was because I just felt like because the Lions came out attacking so fast, the Niners just were trying to go big every every play mm-hmm. and kept on falling short. Where there was so many times, I feel like so many times I saw either McCaffrey or Kittle for a, for a check down, very easy, right in front of Brock Purdy, and he's wanting to take that deep shot and get down the field fast instead of just going with one of them. I think Kittle only caught like two passes. I had him for fifty plus yards and didn't hit that on a parlay. Wow. Uh, and so, so it was just kind of shocking to see that in the biggest game of, of the of the season, mm-hmm. most crucial moments, you're not going to the guy that you know is very reliable downfield. Yeah. Uh, and so, you know, it was just – I feel like there was – the first half seemed like a lot of that where they're trying these big plays, trying to get plays back in chunks instead of just playing your game. Second half, they came out and played their game. They, they found the, the they found the zones on the outside they found they found the gaps in, in the zone from from the lines they found uh you know their their key rep, their key receivers they they were able to get Debo Samuel out on a sweep and stuff like that so just really really good play calling in the second half to be able to come back from that game absolutely but I mean if 
if San Francisco <clears throat> plays to their full mentality going to the Super Bowl, which we've seen them do throughout the entire year, there's going to be a big party in San Francisco, to say the least. But I think the the big thing is everybody's just got to be on the same page here in this type of situation, obviously. There's no next week. There's no, we'll get them next time. This is the Super Bowl. This is the time to do it. And I know, especially in the Super Bowl, we'll see those those we'll see those plays to where we've maybe done it once or twice in the regular season. But I think we might get some of those specialty plays like what we see a lot in the Super Bowl. So it's definitely going to be fun. We're we're going to talk about the Super Bowl more. I know we will um, because it's a couple weeks away now. Yep. Uh, so, but your early pick, if you had to make a pick now, and it may change. Who are you taking for your pick, Blake? I'm taking the Chiefs uh, because I believe in Andy Reid. I believe in Patrick Mahomes. I believe in Travis Kelsey. I believe in that Chiefs defense to make it really, really difficult on Brock Purdy. Look, if you get down uh, 24 to 7 to the Chiefs, you yeah, ain't coming back. back. Yeah, they're, they're closing it back. out. You you go down yeah. you know seventeen to to seven mm-hmm. to the Chiefs yeah they're gonna make sure you don't come back yeah so, and and I, I really I really really like um, the Andy Reid Travis Kelsey and Pat Mahomes man mm-hmm. a little bit more than I like what San Francisco has to offer even though I do like Debo Ayuk and CMC well, and, and you know what's what's funny too is that you know the the Chiefs even last year. I just I didn't like seeing the Chiefs there. You know, it was it was definitely I was I was on the side of the haters. You know, that just just didn't want to see the Chiefs there. They're they're a hard team to like Screwed sometimes. But Bengals. this year, seeing them go through the adversity that they went through, and then of course being able to see Taylor Swift up in the the uh, the box every game uh, that was really nice too. Nice so to Jason Kelsey. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I mean, no, just seeing the adversity that they had to go through, seeing it a Chiefs team that actually had to fight for their wins instead of just cruising right through their schedule. Uh, it, it made to me it made them a lot more it made them a lot more likable mm-hmm. uh, and and easier to root for. But yeah. uh, I, I'm right there with you. I'm picking the Chiefs. Are you going to break the break the streak? I want everybody to say with me. How about the, uh, slow your roll? I'm going with the 49ers <laughs> here, everybody. But I would love to see. I as much as I want to pick the Chiefs, I think San Francisco has what it takes to beat the Kansas City Chiefs here. I mean. My dad was a San Francisco. He was born and raised in San Francisco. He's been a 49ers fan his whole life, and I want to see Mister Irrelevant prove all those irrelevant people wrong and have him host that Lombardi Trophy. So yeah, yeah, I mean, I'm picking I, the 49ers. I, I like I like the Niners too. I mean, I, I feel like either way, I'm pretty happy for him because I, I like the dynasty. Uh, you know, it's it, there's there's got to be dynasties going on, mm-hmm. and so I, I like the dynasty that's going on. It's going to yeah. come to an end. So is is it going to come to an end now and start to go downhill? Because we thought it was starting to go downhill prior, I mean, whenever whenever Tyreek Hill left, and then yeah. you know this past season they came out just looking like like straight booty cheeks, and you know and then Bugs. kind of just not not looking good. And uh, so I mean overall, just this this Chiefs team is probably the worst Chiefs team, at least when, when, from what we're used to, because they they're not good yeah. on offense. Their defense is is incredible. incredible uh, yeah. So it's it's really hard to to kind of argue with that that uh, that defense. But yeah, I'm I'm right there. I'm there right there with you though, Blake. I'm, I think I'm taking Chiefs. Josh, I got an idea, man. Can we can we get a shirt? Look, I got one. I got one. I had a I had a Washington guy that I know uh, talking to me about Kalen DeBoer going to Alabama and everything. And I know we say cheeks and and buns and everything. So, um the Michigan Wolverines just absolutely booty blasted his Washington Huskies. And I need, <laughs> when somebody gets blown out, I need that on a shirt, dog. You, your team got booty blasted. All right. I think they'd sell like just, hotcakes. Just, just to say Washington got booty blasted? Washington got booty blasted. Or, that, or 49ers got booty blasted. Something, 49ers you know, got I booty mean, blasted? <laughs> yeah. Hey, I think they'd sell like hotcakes. Let's do it. Let's do it. We're gonna we're gonna come up with we're gonna come up with the design. We're gonna we're gonna put them out there. You guys can check out our our merch store. Check it out. We're gonna we're gonna get them up. I I love that. But uh, we're gonna check out. So uh, I guess I I want to go to the MVP discussion. But before we do, uh, let's have a quick word from our other sponsors. 
And that's over at Factor. Uh, you can get started on your resolutions. I know we're at the end of the month, but some people don't get started until towards the end of January. Get started on your resolutions if you haven't already by using Factor for this new year. Factor's ready-to-eat meal delivery service takes care of the stress, the stress of meal planning and sets you up for success in the new year. Skip the grocery stores and prep work and cooking fatigue, all of that annoying stuff about cooking and meal prepping. Get rid of it. Instead, get chef-crafted, dietitian-approved meals delivered right to your door with over 35 meals to choose from per week, including options like keto, calorie smart, vegan plus veggie, and more. Plus, there's over 55 weekly add-ons, so all kinds of stuff that you can add to your box. Uh, So you'll have a ton of nutritious and flavorful options to kickstart your resolutions this year. Factor now offers loads of snack options like breakfast and smoothies and juices and protein shakes and snacks, all kinds of things to keep you going no matter what is on the schedule. Uh, and another th- another thing that makes them so amazing is that when things get hectic, Factor is extremely fe- flexible. You can change up your order every week with plans from 4 to 18 meals per week, uh, and you can even pause or s- reschedule your delivery times anytime. Uh, There's times where I'm out of town and I didn't get to eat the meals that I had picked out for me last week. So I'll go on to Factor and I will pause my meals and that way I don't have another box show up and have some of them go bad. I want to make sure I get through them. So it it makes it very very easy to be able to pause and reschedule all of your deliveries. So you can can get a a hold of Factor too. You can head over to factormeals.com slash rising250 and get yourself an amazing 50% off with the code rising250. So go over there to factormeals.com slash R-I-S-I-N-G-T-O-5-0 and use that code RISING250, R-I-S-I-N-G-T-O-5-0 for an amazing 50% off. It's an amazing service, amazing food. You do not want to miss out on this amazing deal. So go check them out, factormeals.com slash RISING250 and use that code RISING250 for 50% off. We also want to remind everybody if you're watching on YouTube, uh, or if you know if you're watching on YouTube, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Uh, if you've already subscribed, hit the like button. Comment down below. Uh, it helps us out a lot over here on YouTube. We've been growing a lot lately, uh, and it's a huge thanks to you guys. So keep that going. But guys, let's get into MVP discussion. Uh, I want to talk about this because obviously I think Lamar is going to win it, and I don't think there's really much of a discussion about that. I think he's going to win it. But if we waited until after the playoffs were done to make our decision, would you not lean towards Christian McCaffrey? Because pers- personally, Chris- Christian McCaffrey has been my guy all season long. That's the guy I've been looking at saying that's 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 the guy. I can understand the Lamar pick, but now you saw him choke in the biggest game, and he didn't adapt very well. Yeah. Uh, so personally, I mean, Blake, I, I see you nodding your head. Are you, are you right there with me? Yeah, 100%. Uh, I think Christian McCaffrey, when you talk about valuable to a team, you take him off the 49ers. Yeah, they're still good. They still have Debo and Ayuk and Brock Purdy and George Kittle and everything. But let's talk about who gets in that end zone. Let's talk about who gets in that box and who makes that offense go. And it's Christian McCaffrey. I think he went like, what, 16, 17 straight games with a touchdown? Or yeah. some something yeah, crazy he, like I, I that. Know he at least tied the record for most consecutive games with a touchdown. If he if he didn't break it, I thought he broke it. I, I, yeah. I feel I feel like he just tied it for some reason, but I, I can't remember. Maybe maybe I and can try to pull it up. The thing with CMC man is is he's electric out of the backfield catching the football. He's electric now in between the tackles. Dude's gaining like six seven yards a carry yesterday. Uh, he's he's a home run threat. Like, anytime he gets the ball, he's a home run threat. And Lamar, I, I, yeah, I know he's going to win it. And he deserves it. I'm not saying that he doesn't. Yeah, 100%. I'm right there with you. But, yeah, I, I just feel like uh, CMC kind of got looked at as, oh, well, he has all these superstars on his team. And, uh, you know, Lamar did it without Mark Andrews. And, and I get it. So, I do think – it's, it's kind of like me with the Heisman, man. I think they need to wait. And and I feel the same way with the MVP. Wait until everything is over, then yes. make your decision. So he he did tie it uh, equal with Hall of Famer Lenny Moore's NFL uh, record mark from 1965. Uh, and then he he was better than 15 game runs by John Riggins and a uh, man that maybe we shouldn't name OJ Simpson. Didn't what was he was he guilty? That's up to you to decide. Um, yeah, I mean, I, glove didn't fit. I, true, you know, yeah. uh, you know it. 
he, yeah, he he's released, so you can't say much about that. Uh, yeah. Heck of an athlete, though. That's oh, one yeah, thing you can say about athlete. him. That's that's one thing you can't deny. Heck of an athlete. Uh, I was even looking on Madden, like scrolling through some of the the records, and they have the record books, and his name is in some of the record books on Madden. So I mean, just heck of an athlete. Can't take that away from. Him. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I just I, I I hate the fact that it's a quarterback award. I feel like you've got to give love to the to the running back every yeah. once in a while, especially when he's deserving. And I think. Of all of the years, this is the year that a running back is very well deserving yes. uh, over that running back who just happens to throw the ball more often. Mm-hmm. I mean, you seriously, Blake, you said the best. It's like the high, I think it should be like the highest man. I don't care what you guys would say during all the season. Wait till everything is sincerely done just because you get that equalism factor for everybody. And like, obviously, talking about Christian McCaffrey, he's been an absolute powerhouse this entire season is his entire career. Christian McCaffrey has done nothing but succeed in his career. I know he's battled through injuries. He's battled through a lot of things. I mean, the big thing that hurt me, especially watching the San Francisco game was watching him run and then landing on top of his head. And then yeah. going back on the side. He did that I can several tell, times. Yeah. You can tell he had stingers just going. Cause I saw the trainers just working on his shoulders. I'm like, he had one earlier. I think it was in the second half. If I remember right, where he yeah. did that, where he like slid and my dad and I were joking, like, well, too bad. They can't give him yards for sliding, sliding. an extra five, 10 yards yeah. on his head. But Literally. you know, he, he got up fine from that one, but you could tell it was definitely, a, it was definitely a stinger for Literally. sure. Like I wasn't, my shoulders just started to hurt hurt just looking at all those all those pain sliders and it it was just absolutely mind-boggling for how much pain that he can withstand and just keep doing what he's doing just make it seem like it's a shoulder duster and just keep keep balling but I mean it sincerely needs to be that way for for the MVP just let the entire season go I mean I mean if it's if it's this difficult to decide between a running back and a quarterback because their stats are different they they compare differently can we just make can we just make a quarterback, uh, you know, an MVP quarterback award and an MVP running back award, best mm-hmm. wide receiver? I mean, we, we have best wide receiver. We have, like, the uh, – what's it called whenever you have the most rushing yards? Um, you, you, you've got several different break breakups Break, of different yeah. – let's just make a an MVP that, that we separate the quarterbacks on, on their own. And then – because I feel like running back, wide receiver, all of those uh, skill positions, you can pretty well – put together uh, and, mm-hmm. and, and maybe defensive be on, be on their own too. I don't know. It, it just feels unfair to me to, to look at, at a quarterback and say, yeah, but he has more yards. He touches the ball every single play. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I'm, I'm right there with you, man. I just, I, I, I hate to see CMC be robbed of it this year, but um, you know he will. Yeah. But I, I think, I think the Super Bowl is going to be exciting. Uh, I'm, I'm happy to see this matchup. I, I love to see this matchup. I know a lot of America is not so happy to see this matchup, but, uh, like I, like I was teasing, uh, Jared, uh, over, you know, at the corner booth, uh, podcast, I was teasing him. I said, the reason why I want the chiefs to go to the Super Bowl so bad, uh, is because I know everyone doesn't want to see it. And there's just kind of a little bit of enjoyment and seeing everybody in pain. Uh, so I, you know, I just, I want to see America just, just, angry i want to see the super bowl at the lowest ratings it's ever been just because people are so sore about their own team not making it but that's pretty much all we've got for tonight we had a, a really good discussion on that uh, make sure to tune in on our thursday episode we're going to talk about some college football realignment matchups that i want to get into uh, not enough time tonight to talk about them so we're going to push that off to our next episode so make sure to tune in on thursdays episode for that but for everybody watching listening if you're watching on youtube make sure to hit that subscribe button like i said before hit that uh, like button as well and you can hit the notification bell if you want to know when we have a new episode on on the youtubes ready for you to go Uh, if you're listening on apple Podcasts, spotify or wherever you listen to to your podcasts on the audio version please give us a five-star review that's a great way to help us out over there and you can follow us on social media make sure to go give us some love over there on X, formerly known as Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, all of that fun stuff. But guys, we thank you so much for all of the love, all of the support. We'll see you next time.